The F-104J flies for Japan in War Thunder. Let's check it out. Japan's use of the F-104 had its roots in a fairly well-known series of bribery scandals involving Lockheed, which had used its extensive network of political lobbyists and business contacts to influence some overseas aviation purchases and secure itself sales contracts using illegal bribery and influence schemes. Not great. In Japan, during the late 1950s, the Japanese Air Self-Defense Force was originally interested in purchasing an upgraded version of the F-11, called the Super Tiger, as it was in the process of phasing out its older F-86 Sabres. But Lockheed was able to influence the Japanese finance minister and just outright bribe the Air Force Chief of Staff into licensing a local production deal for the F-104 Starfighter instead. Now, a number of changes were made to the design in order to meet Japan's requirements, and the first pre-production batch was produced directly by Lockheed, with the remainder being built locally in Japan. Changes included additional weapon pylons, a Japanese version of the J-79 engine, a modified radar system with air-to-ground targeting equipment removed, and some minor structural alterations meant to improve safety. The F-104J entered service in 1966 and was pretty frequently involved with the interception of Soviet aircraft around the northern areas of Japan. In total, Japan had just over 200 F-104Js in service, and actually, the Japanese had a much better safety record with their F-104s than most other operators, and only three of them were lost to accidents. In total, seven squadrons were equipped with the F-104J, and they flew for Japan all the way until 1986. After phasing them out, a small number, less than 40, were refurbished in the United States and then sold to Taiwan. What we get in War Thunder is the F-104J, a jet fighter in rank 6 of the Japanese tech tree with a battle rating of 10.3. This jet carries an upgraded version of the North American Search and Ranging Radar. This radar set ends up being fairly basic, with pretty average detection and range, but it does have an ACM foresight mode, which can be situationally useful, and the radar can help you find targets at high altitude. The jet carries the M61A1 cannon with 750 rounds of ammunition, and it gets a pretty good selection of ammo belts to go with it. This ends up being a very effective weapon against both air and ground targets, but you don't get a CCIP, so aiming the thing is entirely manual. For loadouts, you can take up to four air-to-air -air missiles and a pair of rocket pods. The missiles are carried on the wingtips and a pair of chin pylons, while the rocket pods are mounted under the wings. For air-to-air -air missiles, you get three versions of the AIM-9 Sidewinder, the B, E, and P models. The AIM-9B is a very entry-level weapon, with a caged seeker and poor performance. The E is an upgrade, with an uncaged seeker and better range, but it's still fairly limited. The AIM-9P is going to end up being your primary weapon, with significantly better performance than the earlier models. It has 20 Gs of pull, and it can slave to a radar lock, both of which make it much easier to actually score hits with compared to the B and E models. For air-to-ground weapons, you get a pair of rocket pods with seven rockets each. You don't get any ballistics computer, and given the low quantity, these are almost useless on this jet, but you can try to use them as improvised flares if you want. The flight performance of the F-104J is heavily skewed towards flying at high altitude and high speed. The good news is that it does those two things incredibly well. The rate of climb is excellent with afterburner, and it's got a really good maximum speed. The acceleration is also comparatively decent, and even from a runway start, you're going to end up shooting out in front of the rest of your team more often than not, easily punching through Mach 1 at low altitude. In addition to this, the F-104J has good air brakes and an outstanding rate of roll. That's about where the good news ends. The problem with the F-104J, and most starfighters, is that it just doesn't turn very well, and it can't pull hard on its vertical axis. The sweet spot for turn performance 
seems to be in between about 850 and 1000 kilometers an hour, which should allow you to get a good energy turn. But good is relative here. Good relative to the F-104J at lower speeds or at Mach 1 point infinity, but still generally not as good as other jets that it faces. The vast majority of traditional turning dogfights are not going to end well for the Starfighter, and you have to try to avoid slow crawl dogfighting whenever possible. The energy retention is also pretty bad, which combined with its poor turning rate adds up to a really tricky flight model. Just get fast, stay fast, and fly in a straight line. Taking the F-104J out in air battles is a pretty unique experience if you're coming up from the F-86 before it in the tech tree. To be successful with this jet, you're going to need to adopt one of two basic strategies. The first is flying passes through the battlefield without turning in to engage as you go past. The basic idea is that you just crank the throttle and make a maximum speed into and through the battle area, looking for an opportunity to line up a missile shot or a gun burst on a target as you're flying past. Regardless if you hit or miss, you just keep going as fast as you can to try to prevent more maneuverable opponents from engaging you in a dogfight that you're just not going to win. After you're comfortably out of the battle, say five to seven kilometers away, you turn around for another pass and do it again. This can be effective if you can avoid getting missiles fired at you, but it's a really slow paced kind of gameplay and it's got a tendency to just run out the clock. In short, everyone's going to hate you for doing this, especially if you're the last person left alive on your team. The second common strategy with this jet is to play as more of a high altitude vulture. You want to use your rate of climb and your speed to get up above the battle, around like one kilometer above everyone else if you can, and then use careful positioning to play little cat and mouse games with the people down below you until you can line up to dive down for some boom and zoom passes, taking a shot or two on your way through, and then disengaging to climb back up, or converting to that fly past method I mentioned a minute ago, sort of combining the two. This tends to be a more interesting way to fly the plane, and it keeps you paying attention, but it can be a bit more difficult, as you do actually need to use good positioning tactics in order to make it work. Still, this is generally what I would personally suggest you start doing when you get the F-104J, and over time, you can add in some more gentle turning passes into your playstyle. Now, in terms of ground attack, well... I rarely say this, but this plane is almost useless for ground pounding or close air support. The rocket pods just don't have enough ammo to be useful beyond like tagging a strategic base for a few extra points. And even though the cannon hits hard, you don't get a ballistics computer, so it can be really difficult to actually hit anything with it as you're flying by at like 700 kilometers an hour or faster at low level. Don't bother with ground attack, just go do air combat with this plane. Visually, the F-104J is a great looking plane, but I'm kind of biased as I've always loved the Starfighter. The blue paint job that you can get is especially fun, and overall, they just did an excellent job on the visuals here. Landing this plane, well, it's tricky. As with all Starfighters, the landing speeds are fast, and you don't really get a lot of wiggle room to correct errors or anything, so you're going to want to line up your final approach pretty carefully and pretty far away if you can. You can drop gear at a bit over 500 kilometers an hour, and you can drop landing flaps at around 440. Plus, this jet gets an arrestor hook, so you can actually do carrier landings. Kind of. The cockpit on this jet has good visibility in most directions, but the rearward view kind of sucks, and the canopy bracing right out in front feels really obstructive. Still, clearly visible radar scope and easy to read instruments. Overall, a pretty average cockpit experience in VR. To close out on the F-104J. This jet is crazy fast. 
It gets four uncaged sidewinders. It's got a really strong cannon with lots of ammo. And it's got an arrestor hook. However, it just can't turn. It doesn't get any countermeasures. It's almost useless for ground attack. And landings can be a little difficult. The final verdict on the F-104J is that this plane is the complete opposite of the jets before it, and it represents a huge paradigm shift for players progressing up through the Japanese tech tree. It's difficult to master, but can be effective with a bit of practice. As always, thanks for watching.